Today's topic in cadaveric anatomy is the scapular muscles. This image presents the anterior view of the scapular region with the arm positioned laterally. On the lateral side, the upper end of the humerus is visible, showing two prominent elevations, the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle. The superior angle of the scapula forms the upper projection, while the inferior angle points downward. From this anterior view, we can clearly observe the subscapularis muscle, which occupies the subscapular fossa. Its fibers converge laterally to insert onto the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Other structures visible in this specimen include the supraspinatus muscle, located along the superior aspect of the scapular region. The coracoid process is seen projecting laterally, giving attachment to the conjoint tendon, which is formed by the short head of the biceps brachii and the coracobrachialis muscle. Adjacent to the coracoid process, you can identify the suprascapular ligament. Between the greater and lesser tubercles of the humerus, the tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii is visible, with its cut end shown in this view. This image shows the superior view of the scapula. The superior angle of the scapula is clearly visible, and the spine of the scapula can be seen on its posterior aspect. Here the lateral part of the spine has been removed to expose the infraspinatus muscle, which lies beneath it. Laterally, the infraspinatus blends with the capsule of the shoulder joint. The capsule of the shoulder joint itself can be identified on the lateral aspect. Also visible in this view is the supraspinatus muscle, arising from the supraspinous fossa. Its tendon extends laterally and merges with the capsule of the shoulder joint, contributing to the rotator cuff. Laterally, the cut end of the coracoacromial ligament can be seen attached to the coracoid process. The coracoid process also gives attachment to the coracoclavicular ligament, which stabilizes the connection between the clavicle and the scapula. This image presents the posterior view of the scapular muscles. On the lateral side, you can see the posterior surface of the humerus along with its muscular attachments. Superiorly, the spine of the scapula is clearly visible, though it is partially cut on its lateral aspect. The inferior angle of the scapula points downward, marking the lower end of the bone. Now observe the scapular muscles. All of these blend with the capsule of the shoulder joint, together forming the rotator cuff, also known as the musculotendinous cuff. The muscle seen above the spine of the scapula is the supraspinatus, while the muscle below the spine is the infraspinatus. Arising from the lateral border of the scapula is the teres minor muscle. All three, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, unite with the capsule to form the posterior part of the rotator cuff. The lateral border of the scapula also gives origin to the teres major muscle, and the cut portion of this muscle can be observed near its origin. Other notable features include the long head and lateral head of the triceps brachii and the constricted region of the humerus, identified as the surgical neck of the humerus. This image shows the posterior view of the scapular muscles with the teres major muscle intact. It clearly demonstrates the intermuscular spaces of the back, also known as the scapular spaces. Let's begin by identifying the key muscles. The medial muscle on the dorsal surface of the scapula is the infraspinatus. Along the lateral border of the scapula, two muscles are seen. The teres minor, arising from the upper part of the lateral border, and the teres major originating below it. The teres minor, along with the infraspinatus, blends with the capsule of the shoulder joint, forming part of the rotator cuff. The teres major, on the other hand, passes anterior to the long head of the triceps to insert onto the shaft of the humerus. 
the long head of the triceps lies on the medial side, while the lateral head is positioned along the lateral aspect of the humerus. Now let's identify the scapular spaces formed between these muscles. The quadrangular space, the upper triangular space, and the lower triangular space. Starting with the quadrangular space, superiorly, bounded by the teres minor and the capsule of the shoulder joint, inferiorly by the teres major, medially by the long head of the triceps, laterally by the surgical neck of the humerus. Through this space, you can observe the axillary nerve passing. Next, the upper triangular space is bounded superiorly by the teres minor, inferiorly by the teres major, laterally by the long head of the triceps. Finally, the lower triangular space, also called the triangular interval, is bounded superiorly by the teres major, laterally by the shaft of the humerus, medially by the long head of the triceps. Within this space, notice the radial nerve passing through, as seen clearly in the specimen. In this dorsal view, the scapular muscles have been dissected and partially removed to expose the fibrous capsule of the shoulder joint. Let's identify the structures visible here. The dissected muscles include the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, all of which contribute to the posterior part of the shoulder joint capsule. Along the lateral aspect, the flattened cut ends of these muscles blend with the capsule to form the rotator cuff, also known as the musculotendinous cuff. Just below the capsule, you can observe the cut part of the long head of the triceps brachii. With this, we conclude the demonstration of the scapular muscles. Thank you.